now 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.2, number 13. And here we were told we had an arithmetic sequence, right? And so whenever I hear arithmetic, I'm going to go ahead and remind myself that there's a D involved, right? There's some kind of difference that I need to find. And typically when you have an arithmetic sequence, the two most important features to find are D itself. This one's super important. And then the other one that I would always recommend finding is A sub 1. Usually those two things, once you have D and A sub 1, you can get pretty far in a problem. And looking at what they gave us, they did not give us either of those, right? I did not get A sub 1. I got A sub 13, and a sub 33, and I did not get D. But we can figure out what D is from these first two problems, or first two terms, I should say, that they gave us. Because if this is 13 and this is 33, if we look at the subscripts there, I had to go 20 terms to get from A sub 13 to 33. And if you're wondering where I got the 20, I'm literally doing 13, excuse me, 33 minus 13. 20 terms. So if I want to get from a sub 13 to a sub 33, I need to add 20 of those differences. And that's the formula that I'm setting up here. a sub 33 is my starting point of a sub 13 plus 20 differences. And so I'm going to plug in negative 160 for a sub 33, negative 60 for a sub 13, and then I can go ahead and solve for d, and I get d is equal to negative 5. So that's a big get, right? I got my d value, and once you know the d value, then it's time to go find a sub 1. And we're going to use that arithmetic sequence formula, and for a sub n, we can either plug in 13 or 33 for the n value, because I have both of those terms. I typically opt for the one with the smaller number, so I'm going to go with a sub 13. So basically, I'm going to plug in a sub 13. This would become negative 60, but the n itself is going to be 13, right? I know n, again, it's 13, and I know d, and that'll allow me to solve for a sub 1. So let me clean all this out because that's a lot to take a look at. And you see me subbing that in in the next step, right? I'm letting a sub n and turn into a sub 13. You see me subbing in the 13 here and the D value. But I also happen to know a sub 13 is negative 60. And so when you wind up solving for that, you find out that your first term is 0. OK, so if a sub 1 is 0 and we know D is 5, excuse me, negative 5, then I can go write the first few terms or the first five terms as directed. Right, a sub 1 is 0, a sub 2 is negative 5, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. There we go. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.